Hey folks, David Stewart here. I thought I'd take a few minutes and talk about Confederate war monuments and statues of Confederate generals. Um, I know this is kind of a hot political topic at the moment, and I'm sure other YouTube commentators have talked about this in great detail, and I don't want to retread their ground, but I haven't seen all of the videos that are out there. So if I'm saying some stuff other people have said, uh, I apologize, I'm not trying to rip anybody off. Um, a little bit of background before I talk about this. I am originally from the South. I was born in East Texas, um, and it, indeed, virtually all of my family still resides in Texas with the exception of like some cousins and my mother, right? So everybody still is from East Texas. However, I moved to California a long time ago and I received all of my public education in California. So I have both of these perspectives. I have the Southern perspective, and um, which is different from other parts of the country if you're from the South and if you've done a lot of traveling here in the United States. Um, but I have the, the uh, California perspective as well. And I think that will inform a little bit of what I'm going to say. Um, another thing I'll say before I sort of begin the meat of this, one of the things you'll notice if you've been around for a while is every couple of years, these sorts of controversies regarding the Confederacy and regarding the Civil War start to pop up uh, again. So um, when I was a kid, there was a big, you know, big controversy over the Confederate flag. In fact, I remember it happening several times is that they, uh, you know, people wanted to have the Confederate ta flag taken down from all sort of public places. Some people even wanted it banned as like a, I don't know, a hate symbol or something like that. That, um, that this Confederate flag represented racism because the South owned slaves. Um, meanwhile, the American flag has done some pretty racist things as well, including the American flag flew over the South when there were slaves. And also the American flag um, was waved by the forces that extracted the Cherokee and and uh, engaged in the Trail of Tears, a, a genocide. So it's not like the American flag doesn't represent racism. It's that the Confederate flag was, was special. But anyway, the point is this pops up every couple of years and it's always... Um, it's always uh, uh, it's always like a racist thing, and it's always something coming from the left. It's never like the right that wants to destroy the old symbols. Um, but, of course, the South tends to hold on to these, and that, I think, has some importance with some of the things I'm going to talk about. So here's the first big idea. Uh, first big idea is when I was raised and when I was going through a government school, and indeed most of you who are watching went through a government school, um, at least if you're from uh, the United States or Europe, um, and if you're from the U.S., you probably were told something along these lines, or this was probably informing some of the talk about the Civil War. And we studied the Civil War probably three times, three, uh, you know, three different age levels in public school. And that as the Civil War was particularly, was considered particularly bad or particularly, it was like the deadliest war in American history because both sides were considered Americans, meaning the total casualties, the total loss of American lives was all civilians and all soldiers on both sides of the conflict. And the reason for that is that the entire reason for having the Civil War was to, quote, preserve the Union, meaning that the South was part of the United States and that the people in the South were Americans and the war was there to make sure that they remained Americans. So it would be completely illogical and sort of antithetical to that idea to say that the Southerners were somehow not American um, because they were by de definition Americans, meaning that all the soldiers who fought for the South were Civil War veterans and American Civil War veterans, even though they fought for one side in a civil war. Um, and they, they fought for the losing side in the civil war. And of course, it's the winners who usually write the history books. And uh, we all know that. Um, and in fact, I think in like 19, in the 1950s, there was an act of Congress that declared all um, Confederate soldiers to be United States veterans, and that all of their cemeteries were United States cemeteries, um, thus making it official that, uh, from the Congress's perspective at least, like making it um, somehow legally official that they were, that they were, um, that they were veterans. But this perspective really informed a lot about the Civil War. That the Civil War was about maintaining this idea of America. That it wasn't about conquest of a foreign entity. Um, now, if you're going to look at um, the losing side as uh, a side full of un-American traitors, that goes against the narrative that we're, we're there about preserving the Union, um, that you shouldn't remember both sides as Americans, that you should only remember one side as Americans, and anybody who opposed them was by definition a traitor. And that's, um, that's a very important word, and that's a word that I'm seeing thrown around a lot on social media, is the word traitor. Now, 
the word trader is itself an argument from authority because a trader is merely somebody who opposes the current um, the current political power, right? The per current political organization says if you if you do something that's against us, it's treason. That's what treason is. So of course, you know, oh, everyone in the South was treasonous. The all of the legislatures were treasonous. Robert E. Lee, who declined to to take up a Union commission and went to the Confederacy, he's a traitor. Uh, but if the South had won, none of them would be by definition traitors. And we know that this is the case because George Washington was a traitor to the crown of England, as was Ben Franklin, John Hancock, on down the list. So the, the originators of America were, of course, traitors to the political establishment that birthed them, which was, um, which was the British government. Um, so by rebelling against the king... Were they not traitors? Well, we don't think of them as traitors because they actually won their independence. They said, no, we're something different than England. We fight a war over it, and then we declare ourselves not England, and now we're not traitors. Now, if the South had won the war, they said, no, we're something different than the United States. We're a different set of Americans, and they win the war, then they're not traitors in their own minds. And of course, the people who fought for the Confederacy were not traitors in their own minds. They were viewed, they were viewing what they were doing as defending their homeland. Uh, and that's that's really important because even going back to prior to the Civil War, there was this idea that there were two uh, two different cultures in America, the Yankee culture and the Southern culture. And if you're from the South today or you've done a lot of living in the South, that's still true to a certain extent. And so you have to kind of decide which of the narratives is the true one. Were we one America and the fight was to preserve the Union, in which case um, all of the Confederate generals were American generals um, worthy of remembrance. Or uh, or is the South a conquered country? Did the Civil War begin the American Empire and the South is a conquered territory of a distinct people? And if they are a conquered territory of a distinct people, then it seems totally uh, like what an empire would do to destroy their symbols of their own culture, including the Confederate flag and their particular war heroes, whoever they might be. Um, and that's an important, uh, that's like the main point that I had. The other thing is that um, a lot of the opposition, uh, or you know, a lot of the opposition to these statues comes to do with um, the, the very big moral issue of slavery, which shouldn't be ignored. It's like these people were fighting for slavery. Well, so did everyone in the Revolutionary War. George Washington owned slaves. Thomas Jefferson owned slaves. Um, there was a lot of slave owners that were presidents early on in American history and who participated in the First Rebellion. Um, so some people have been slightly intellectually honest and begun wanting to attack those monuments, and other people have not been willing to make that somehow jump over it. And um, really, you the, the question is whether or not you want to look at these things as like, products of their time, or you want to apply current moral sensibilities to this. And for this, um, I will actually mention that I think I heard Sargon of Akkad in the latest um, This Week in Stupid talk about this particular concept, which is that um, when you look at back in the past and you, um, you see figures that don't agree with your current moral or religious, um, you know, your current or more current moral or religious sensibilities, uh, you shouldn't destroy those things because those are products of history. That's that's part of your history, uh, is that there's some amount of moral progress when it comes to moral sentiments. And just because somebody was from a time that didn't have those moral sentiments doesn't mean that you obliterate their memory. And indeed, the obliteration of the memory of the Confederacy is something that, like trying to throw it in the middle, uh, in, down in the memory hole, is something that's very Orwellian and something that I think is actually quite dark. Um, and I think... It's something that should be avoided personally. Um, now, let's talk about some solutions. Like one of the most obvious ones is that you don't have to have these on, on public land. Um, so if they're going to be removed from public land, somebody can offer to put them up in, in a, like a private, a private display, a private uh, piece of property to display that artwork. Um, and also, it's up to legislatures. If legislatures really want to tear them down, um, then, and, you know, since the legislature owns the property, it's government-owned property, then they technically have the authority to do that. Um, but if they don't want to tear them down, then no one else has the authority to do that either, um, while still recognizing the concept of government having authority over the land, at least the land that it owns. Um, so that's something that's that's interesting as well. There's nothing, there was nothing about the when when the reconstruction happened, 
there was lots of people that opposed giving the vote back to the South, which would have made it, like I said, a conquered territory. And because it wasn't a conquered territory, because it was brought back into the Union and the, the point was to survive or to uh, preserve the Union, um, they were legislatures had power to do things like raise Confederate war monuments, which they did. Um, and that's part of the, the right of states to do so, to do that sort of thing. So um, that's pretty much all I had to say about that. I'd really appreciate you guys watching leaving your comments down below with um with regards to the confederate war statues i personally don't have like a like a huge love of you know confederate generals or something like that um but i don't like to see history destroyed and the the main thing is is like i don't want uh i don't want the memory of that to go into the to a memory hole and if you do start uh attacking the idea of the confederacy then you're really changing the narrative of what the Civil War was about, that it stops being about preserving the Union and starts being about the conquest of a rebellious territory, the conquest of a foreign nation. So you guys have a great one. Um, check out my books and stuff down below. That's a great way to support me. And uh, you can find me at davidvstuart.com, dbspress.com, facebook.com slash davidvandykestuart. And of course, check out the links for VidMe. If you're watching this on VidMe, give me a holler because I do like to know that there's some living human beings on VidMe. You guys have a great day. I'll see you next time.